In this video, we will install a three-node data repository cluster, which is the underpinning of a DX NetOps performance management installation. To get started, we have already downloaded the compressed installer from the support site, which, in this temp directory, we can see the compressed NetOps DA21.2.11 release file. We need to extract the installer, so we'll enter tar xfvz and the file name which will extract the installers. The compressed installation media file contains the data aggregator and the data repository installer. We only need the data repository installer for this phase. And we can see the data repository installer right here, which is the installdr.bin file. The data repository is a Vertica database and the install process is a multi-part process. The first step is to run the installdr.bin file. This installer contains the RPM for the Vertica database, and when this installer is run, it extracts the Vertica installer and the supporting files into a directory specified when the installer runs. But the installdr.bin file does not actually install the Vertica database. This happens in a later step. Next, using the extracted files, the configurations for the Vertica database are defined in the drinstall.properties file. Then the Vertica database validation tool is run to verify the configurations and the database nodes are all set up correctly to successfully install the database. And once everything is ready, then the Vertica database installer is run manually, which performs the actual installation of the Vertica database. We are ready to start the first phase, so we'll run the installdr.bin installer. For the Choose Locale option, we'll choose English. Next is a quick introduction about running the installer, which is good to review. We'll press Enter to continue to the next option, which is the license agreement. We'll accept the agreement. And next, the host evaluation runs, which verifies the host has the right amount of memory, cores, and the available kernel. For the Choose Install folder, to clarify, this is not the directory where the data repository will be installed. This is the directory where the installer will extract the RPM for the Vertica database, which includes the installer and the supporting files. For this option, we will use the default folder, so we'll press Enter, and now the installer runs. As the installer runs, we'll copy the directory while we're here, because we will need to change to this directory to access the, the extracted files to install Vertica. And now the installation is done. We will press Enter to exit the installer, and then wait a moment for the installer to complete its cleanup. OK, now we are ready to move to the next phase of the installation, which is installing the Vertica database. To begin the Vertica installation phase, we will use the directory we copied earlier to change directories to the location of the Vertica installation files, where we can now see the Vertica installation files extracted from the installdr.bin file. And one important point about this directory, where the files were extracted to, it is a best practice to keep this directory and the files included in the directory. One example of how this is helpful is during troubleshooting, being able to look at the drinstall.properties file provides important information on the configuration of the Vertica database, including usernames and passwords. In the list of files, the three key files are dr underscore validate.sh, which we will run to validate the hosts for the database nodes, dr underscore install.sh, which is the Vertica installer file we will run to install a Vertica, and dr install.properties, which passes configurations to the Vertica installer as it runs. To start the second phase, we first need to make a few edits to the dr install.properties file to define the hostnames and the database password. The password change is optional, but we'll change it for this demonstration. We'll use the VI editor to make the changes, and with the file open in the editor, scroll down to the database hostnames. In the DB hostnames field, there are three placeholder hostnames. We'll delete these hostnames and enter the three actual hostnames, with a comma separating the hostname and no spaces in the list. We can see at the top of the terminal window the first hostname, lvnkdev014792. We'll enter this hostname, and then the next two have the same prefix, but end in 9.3, and then in 
While we are in the drinstall.properties file, let's take a minute and look at the other key fields in the file. The DB admin Linux user home property defaults to the directory export dr admin. In most systems, this export directory does not exist. And if this directory does not already exist before running the Vertica installer, the installer will fail. So before the Vertica installer is run, be sure to either create this directory or change the entry to another existing one before running the installer to avoid an installation failure. The next two properties to be aware of are the DB data DIR property and the DB catalog DIR properties. The DB data DIR property defines the directory for the Vertica database directory. And the DB catalog DIR property defines the directory for the Vertica database catalog. Both of the default values for these properties refer to the directories which will be created in the root directory. In this demonstration, this is acceptable since we are in a demonstration environment, but in many cases, in a large enterprise installation for instance, these directories can grow very large in size, and it is recommended to have a separate mount point for each of these directories so they can scale properly as the database grows. When a separate mount point is used, be sure to change the value of these properties to refer to the mount point for each property. The next three properties to look at are the DB name, DB admin Linux user, and DB password properties. The DB name property refers to the name of the Vertica database instance. The DB admin Linux user refers to the username of the Vertica database administrator username. And the DB password is the database password used to access the database as the admin. These properties do not have to be changed, but even if the default values are used, it is important to document these three properties and provide them to anyone who will administer the DX Setup performance management system. Documenting these properties is important because the values will be used later in the installation process, and in the event there is a need to troubleshoot the system at any time internally, or by contacting support, the database name, admin username, and password will all be needed for troubleshoot and issue resolution. Also, it is common to change these properties for security reasons, which means the default values cannot be used as a fallback for not documenting the values. With that in mind, we will change the default password from dbpass to drpass. And this completes the edits to the drinstall.properties file. We'll type in colon wq exclamation point to save the changes and exit the VI editor. Next, we'll run the dr underscore validate.sh file to validate that the hosts are set up properly to host their portions of the database. As we run the validation, in order for the validation file to know how to find the host to validate, we will reference the dr install properties file as we run the validation file. Also, the validation will check the other settings in the properties file to make sure they are correct. So now we'll run the dr underscore validate.sh file with the minus p and the dr install.properties file. As this runs, passwordless SSH is already set up on the three hosts, and we can see the validation results for each host. If there are any fails or warnings, refer to the installation documentation for help or contact support. So the validation has finished, and all three nodes have passed, and we are ready to install the Vertica database. We'll run the dr underscore install.sh file and pass the same parameter file we just validated using minus p and the dr install.properties file and then hit enter to start the installer. The installer will install Vertica on three separate nodes which will create a three node cluster. This will take a few minutes and we'll go through various phases on various machines. At this point, the Vertica database has been installed on all three nodes in the cluster. Now the installer is creating the data repository directory in the database section. We can see that the nodes are reporting us down, but they will start to come up in just a minute. We have three nodes that are up now, and the installer is adding some additional packages. This is the line that tells us that the three nodes are up. And now the Vertica database installation is done. We can see that we have some results marked OK here. 
create the Vertica database as marked OK, install the Vertica packages as marked OK, and that means we're done. This next part is optional, but we can input the command su to dradmin and run ops vertica bin admin tool. And if we view the database cluster state, we can see that everything is up. By confirming this, we know that our database is fully installed, it looks good, and everything worked out. And with that, we can go back to root and we're all set with the performance management data repository.